Fate is fragile. Do you ever wonder how much of history teetered on a knife's edge? How a gust of wind, a tiny decision, or a random encounter might have spun events in radically different directions? When you take a close look at history, you'll find an astounding amount of evidence that the fate of the world does often hang by a thread. Let's take the Battle of Long Island. In August 1776, George Washington's Continental Army suffered a major setback against the British. Washington's troops were outmatched by the massive British naval fleet and forced to retreat. Had the British been able to sail up the East River, they would have been able to trap Washington's entire army, leaving them with nowhere to flee. But that day, the wind wasn't in their favor. It was blowing in the opposite direction, giving the Continental Army time to regroup. Washington's troops lived to fight another day, eventually winning the battle for independence. It was a quirk of weather at a vital moment that altered the course of America's fight for freedom. It's mind-boggling to think about how many historical outcomes have essentially depended on pure chance. Even in your own personal history, you may have observed the curious, hilarious, and sometimes tragic current of randomness that weaves itself through life. Author Morgan Housel learned this lesson through a traumatic personal experience. In 2001, Housel was a competitive teenage skier. He and two close friends, Brendan and Brian, frequently skied dangerous, out-of-bounds terrain together. One snowy morning, they narrowly survived a small avalanche. Later that afternoon, Brendan and Brian went back out. Housel, on a whim, decided to stay behind. Brendan and Brian never returned. An extensive search revealed they had been killed in a massive avalanche. To this day, Housel is haunted by the feeling that his decision to decline that fateful run was pure chance. He had what we like to call dumb luck. How much dumb luck have you had in your life? Every step we take, life-changing events can emerge from tiny, unforeseeable things no one's thinking about. Radical change can spring from obscure accidents or oversights. That's why predicting the future is so hard. When it comes to what's to come, it's best to expect the unexpected. But there's a silver lining. While forecasting precise events is impossible, predicting human behavior remains reliable. Regardless of external change, people tend to respond to upset, fear, and uncertainty in predictable ways. Once you learn about those ways, you can confidently base your decisions on these timeless psychological constants. The biggest risk is overlooking risk. Do you scrutinize risks before making big decisions? Many of us do, yet we often miss the greatest dangers precisely because they're so unforeseeable. Many of the biggest historical events, from natural disasters to wars, arose from threats nobody imagined. Let's take the chilling example of a NASA test flight gone south. In 1961, astronaut trainee Victor Prather completed a 22-mile high spacesuit test in a hot air balloon. The flight was a success. Prather safely landed on the ocean and opened the faceplate of his suit for some fresh air. But as the rescue helicopter tried to extract him, he slipped and fell into the water. His open helmet immediately flooded with seawater, quickly filling the whole suit. Prather drowned. The story captures how, all too often, the most damaging risks are not those we prepare for, but obscure oversights. As financial advisor Carl Richards once said, Risk is what's left over after you think you thought of everything. As we've learned in the last section, the world is complex and hard to predict. No matter how diligent we are, threats slip through the cracks. That's why focusing too narrowly on prediction often fails us. Major hardships emerge from things that aren't on anyone's radar. Resilience and broad preparedness are much better strategies to deal with the complexities of our world. This lesson applies across contexts, from personal health to business strategy and geopolitics. Low expectations are the key to happiness. Do you ever feel like no matter how much your life improves, you can never seem to feel satisfied? You're not alone. As it turns out, happiness has less to do with our actual circumstances and much more to do with our expectations. The problem is that as life tends to get better for most people over time, expectations rise right along with it. 
The goalposts for what constitutes a good life keep moving farther away. So while material circumstances may improve decade after decade, expectations inflate even faster, leaving happiness levels largely unchanged. Experts call this the hedonic treadmill. It's been going on forever, but it's accelerated in modern times. One factor is social media, which bombards us with curated highlight reels of our peers' lives, stoking envy and feelings of inadequacy. Another is rising inequality, which stratifies growth so that even as our own situation improves, the astronomical wealth of others can make us feel like we're getting nowhere. So, what's the solution? As investing legend Charles Munger, who lived to age 99, puts it, the first rule of a happy life is low expectations consciously. The key is to manage your expectations, recognizing that they play a role that's equal to, if not greater than, material circumstances in determining happiness. This is easier said than done, but here are three ways to keep expectations in check. First, compare yourself less frequently to others. Two, focus more on enjoying what you have rather than lamenting what you lack. And three, recognize that wealth and fame often fail to meet expectations. When your perspective is realistic, satisfaction is much easier to achieve. Certainty kills accuracy. What would stress you more? Knowing you have an uncomfortable meeting coming up or not being sure whether you do? If you chose the latter, you're not alone. Human beings crave certainty, yet our desire to eliminate doubt often leads us astray. The problem is that life is filled with probabilities, not guarantees. In theory, we understand this. But in real life, probability and nuance often take a backseat. Accurate predictions that acknowledge ambiguity feel unsatisfying. Unambiguous assertions, however inaccurate, provide comfort. That's why, as psychologist Philip Tetlock's work shows, experts who make vague but bold predictions brimming with confidence are more popular than modest forecasters, however reliable the latter may be. We also fail to grasp the odds of real-life events, seeing them as either impossible or inevitable. We're shocked beyond belief when a low-probability event like a natural disaster strikes. And when a high-probability event fails to occur, we cry foul. The uncomfortable truth is that accuracy and certainty are usually at odds. Probabilities are meant to capture possibility, not predict specifics. A single event that contradicts our expectations doesn't prove the probabilities wrong. For example, just because you had one terrible car accident doesn't mean you're a terrible driver. Of course, if you've already had five car accidents this year, maybe there's something to it. In order to get an accurate picture of the world, we need to compare results over a long time frame. So when you seek out predictions, beware of extremes. A nuanced forecast that makes a prediction with 80% confidence is probably more accurate than a forecast claiming 100% certainty. Accepting uncertainty takes wisdom, but realizing our bias towards certainty over accuracy is the first step. Stories over stats Why do some new technologies quickly find massive adoption while others fade away? Why do housing bubbles form when the underlying economics don't support rising prices? Whether in history, politics, or economics, things that don't seem to make sense happen all the time. As much as we want the world to follow clean logic, there are often emotional, unquantifiable forces that end up driving outcomes. Take the Vietnam War, for example. Robert McNamara, who was Secretary of Defense at the time, demanded daily statistical reports on the war's progress. The numbers he received about territory gained, enemies killed, and resources expended seemed satisfying. But on the ground, the U.S. kept struggling. As one general noted, McNamara had all the numbers, but he was missing the feelings of the Vietnamese people. Logic said the U.S. was winning. The human element said otherwise. Such a rationality shapes investing, too. In 2008, GameStop and Lehman Brothers had similar financials before their fates diverged spectacularly. GameStop became an obsession for some Redditors, resulting in soaring stocks. Lehman Brothers lost the faith of their investors, driving them to bankruptcy. The difference? The stories people told themselves. 
Statistics alone are unable to measure the emotions and social forces that produce our absurd reality. And they fail to account for our human love of a good story. That's how powerful anecdotes can trump reams of data. And that's how good storytellers can change the course of history. Just think of Martin Luther King Jr.'s iconic I Have a Dream speech. Of course, gripping stories are not always used for the betterment of humankind. They can exploit our preference to hear what we wish were true over inconvenient facts. But that just reinforces the point. Stories can influence people by tapping into sentiments in ways that statistics rarely can. So next time something happens that seems to defy reason, don't get frustrated. Accept that spreadsheets don't run the world. And if you need to persuade someone, don't just wield data. Spend them a good yarn instead. The best story usually wins, whether in business, investing, or life. The Tortoise and the Hare Do you remember the old tale of the tortoise and the hare? In this fable, the plodding turtle eventually trumps the speedy hare, even if it looks a little pathetic doing so. This dynamic manifests everywhere in life. Constructing a house requires great care, but demolishing it takes only minutes. Similarly, the human body takes years to develop fully, while death often stems from simple oxygen deprivation. There's a theme here. Progress creeps along slowly, hardly noticeable day to day or even year to year. Meanwhile, failure strikes quickly, grabbing our attention. This asymmetry shapes our worldview in profound ways. Take the medical advancements of the last decades compared to the devastating effects of COVID-19, or the steady rise of incomes during the 20th century versus the turmoil of the Great Depression. One compounds subtly, the other devastates instantly. Most of the time, the benefits of progress outweigh the drawbacks of failure. But our brains fixate on the latter while taking the former for granted. We also underestimate the power of slow progress, because we fail to grasp exponential change. This shows in our impatience when it comes to investing. We typically ask, what are this year's hottest stocks? When what we should ask is, what can I stick with for decades? But remember that the turtle wins the race eventually, even if the hare grabs the daily headlines. Compounding minor progress over the long haul is better than running wild and failing fast. Differing Experiences One of the most frustrating questions to ask yourself is, why, oh why, some people think differently from you? Well, it's because they've had different experiences. We often underestimate the psychological imprint of pivotal events on our own and other people's lives. Wars eventually end, recessions reverse, disasters get cleaned up, yet the attitudes of those affected may be changed forever. For instance, Survivors of economic calamities may remain permanently skeptical of financial risk. Victims of military conflict are more likely to seek out stability than chase lofty ambitions. And a typical after-effect of experiencing a catastrophe is expecting catastrophe to strike again. Survivors forecast potential crises with unjustified certainty simply because the original event defied predictions. They'd rather be pessimistic than end up getting broadsided again. Understandable, right? Yet, those of us raised in relatively peaceful eras may struggle to grasp how formative such experiences can be. The upshot is realizing that people can disagree, and it's totally fine. Most of the time, they don't disagree because one side is irrational or stupid, but because one side has had experiences that the other can't comprehend. And since the internet exposes us to more of these different viewpoints than ever before, we'd better get used to such disagreements. The simplest way to bridge this gap is to ask, what have you lived through that I haven't, which leads you to believe as you do. It acknowledges the experiences that shape our thinking and opens the door to walking in another's shoes. Disagreement was always a part of our history and always will be. And empathy, as always, is a solution.